Hello everybody, this is Thomas Merrick, and uh, this is the start of another uh, Mega Mech, uh, Mech HQ type series. I'm going to be running with the uh, Free Worlds League military. Um, basically this is going to differ from the Stingray campaign in that uh, I'm not going to be doing any of the battles. At least once we get everything filled out. Uh, this is also just kind of an introductory video to tell the players exactly what's going on, what the unit's going to look like, and to kind of get some initial feedback on what they want to do. So. Here's where uh, where we stand right now is I've already had used the uh, against the bot rules to roll us up a company. I've got us a scout lance, a battle lance, and a command lance. So uh, right now I've got a Zaku warrior and 42 who's wanted to take one of the lances or well one lance each, which means I've got an extra lance uh, until we fill that last lance. Assuming it takes a while, I'll fill in for that lance, whatever lance they don't pick. Uh, but uh, I'm going to basically control the Mech HQ portion of it. I'll kind of handle the back end logistics and getting things repaired, getting requisitions, you know, kind of react to what, you know, we, if they're needing a part or wanting a mech or needing replacement troops or whatever, I can, I'll kind of deal with that and just do what they're wanting us to do. So, uh, as far as. Like recording the battles or whatever, uh, I may do it. Uh, all of them might not get done, uh, but we'll, we'll try. We'll try to get most of them in. Uh, but also something I'm trying to do a little bit different here is I'm going to add in the ability. Well, I guess you always have the ability, but a rule that uh, might dictate that instead of fighting the bot, we'll fight an actual another player. So uh, I'll go into that as we get into uh, actual. Uh, missions and fights as to what what rules I'll be using for that. Uh, speaking of rules, I just want to go over real quick. Well, first of all, I should say that I am currently running a what do we want to call it? A modified dev build. Uh, it's heavily modified from the latest actual official dev release. Uh, so there are going to be bugs. Uh, Part of, part of what uh, has me a little excited for this particular build is, let me go here to the campaign options, is the actual against the bot rules being integrated into Mech HQ. Now this is something that once it's working, and it does kind of work now, there's, there's a serious bug right now that's actually preventing me from actually turning this on completely, but uh, in fact I probably better turn it off. I'll do that here in a minute. Um, Once this is you know fixed, once they actually get the uh, the, the the bugs wrinkled out of this, Mech HQ kind of becomes a game all of a sudden. See, always before I you know I have to pull up my rule sheet and kind of go through it and kind of manually do everything. Mech HQ is actually really good at keeping track of everything, but I have to manually do it. I have to manually put in the, my opposing force. I have to manually you know, set up the fights. It's actually a very time-consuming process. What these rules are going to do <laughs> is basically automate all of that. So all I have to do is create my initial unit, which they haven't added that in yet, but they're even going to add that in. Just, you know, create unit and go. Uh, push the next turn button until you get to your battles, do your battles, it automatically brings up Mega Mech. It's, it's going to actually be an actual game all of a sudden. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn these off for now because it is still buggy. Um, but the rest of this stuff works. I mean, you also got like the against the bot uh, unit generation. So that's something I can keep on and use even, even without turning this specific stuff on. Now, there's a lot of little changes you're going to notice uh, through this. Uh, but two things I want to point out. Uh, first of all, I'm turning off to paying for transport. Because I am actually going to play this as a Merrick unit, I'm going to assume that Uncle Tom or Uncle Mon, uh, Merrick's going to, you know, foot the bill on getting us to the fight. You know, we are going to die for him and all that jazz. The rest of that stuff we're going to keep. It's it's going to be kind of a quasi. Uh, you know, we're going. To, you know, it's going to be like C bills, you know, we're getting funds or whatever. I'm just, I'm just going to basically role play this as this is just what uh, the LCCC has requisitioned is our, you know, our, our parts and so forth. So kind of a abstract way of doing that because the, the rules for actually playing a, a house unit or a clan unit or something like that isn't actually 
easy to, it isn't actually part of the campaign rules yet uh, that is something actually they're working on as well and over here uh, this is something I'm actually wanting to throw all you know bounce off of what you guys want to do I will handle maintenance one of two ways <laughs> those of you who follow the stingrays know that uh, this is my big bugaboo here um, we can either do make the maintenance checks every two weeks at a minus four modifier and please note I am using the era mods for the rolls which means that right now at 3025 is when we're going to start that's a plus three modifier to every single repair roll or I can turn that off and just use a percentage base cost which basically means that maintaining the stuff's going to be a lot more expensive but you don't have the maintenance rules so that's up to you which way you want to go on that uh, one other thing, the delivery time uh, for parts, I'm, this is something I'm going to use in the, the new Stingray campaign as well, is a 3D6 weeks is how long it'll take base time. Uh, for every margin of success, you actually succeed the roll over, over the target. It reduces the time by one week, and there's a minimum transit time of one day. So if you actually take this all the way down to zero, it's, just, it's still one day. And that's how we're going to handle that. So, here are the peoples. Now these images obviously are just what randomly got rolled up. Uh, what I'm going to do is whatever lance you guys pick, uh, you, you can change the force icon, you, want, you can change the name of it, you can change the people inside of it, you know, if you want a different name, uh, picture, different, you know, if you want to change the gender or whatever, that, that's fine with me. Uh, this, the, whatever lance you pick, that's your lance. So, and as far as, uh, you know, I'm going to have potentially three people, potentially more people with different lances that might have some conflicting requests as the, as the commanding general, General Tate here, he's not going to put up with a whole lot of shenanigans. So I will make the judgment based on what is the best for, what I feel is best for the unit. But for the most part, you know, as long as you guys are getting along together, I'm just going to be doing what you guys want me to do. So, I'm just basically the final arbiter in case of uh, disputes. <clears throat> so, uh, let's go ahead and get into the lances so I know which ones you... you that way you know what we got and uh, you guys can kind of choose what we want, where we want to start. So, start with the command lance. Um, this one here I have the captain. She is an elite pilot, I believe. A 3 1. Uh, she has some tactics and one. So she has an edge point and an ability called pain resistance, which uh, does various things. Um, I know one thing it does is she takes less damage from ammo explosions. And there's one other thing that I can't remember off the top of my head what it does. Um, she is in a gladiator. Can't really see that from the screen, can you? second. Alright, there we go. Well, you still can't see it from the screen. <laughs> Alright, whatever. A gladiator is a... Uh, where is it? 585, a uh, couple medium lasers, PPC, SRM-6. It's a uh, 55 tonner. I'm not, I'm not very familiar with that mech. I uh, also have this stalker here. Is also part of the command lance. Stalker 3F. You guys probably should be familiar with that. 3.5, uh, 85 tonner, two LRM-10s, a couple of SRM-6s, large lasers, all kinds of lasers. Have, uh, oh, and he is a uh, 5.3. She is a 5.4. She's in a Hermes 2. I actually have two, though, another one in another Lance. And this guy here is a 6.5 and a Wasp 1A. Wasp 1A is a 20 tonner, uh, 696, with a medium laser and a SRM-6. I don't remember what the Hermes has. I know it's a medium mech. T -t -t Flamer, medium laser, AC-5. It's a 40 tonner. Go 69. So that is the command lance. That is one of your options. Next one is the battle lance. 
has a hatchet man 3f as the commander here and he has uh, a melee specialist ability otherwise he's a 4-3 pilot uh, the hatchet man of course has a hatchet it's a 45 tonner uh, two medium lasers and an AC-10 I think it's 464 as far as this movement Yep, 464. There's a picture of it right there. Good old hatchet man. Uh, got this little lieutenant here. He's in a bombardier. Uh, this is, I believe, an assault mech. He's a 5-3 pilot. Or, no, it's a heavy, it's a heavy mech. It's a 4-6. Um, 65 tonner, SRM-4, two LRM-20s, and a machine gun. This is another mech I'm not very familiar with at all. It's kind of exciting. New mechs. Uh, we've got a Hunchback 4G in this one, a 5-3 pilot. Uh, Hunchback 4G, two medium lasers, an AC-20, and a small laser. goes 4-6. And I've got a Stinger, 6-4 pilot, medium laser, two machine guns, 6-9-6, 20 tons. And that's the Battlelands. Now, I, I kind of spread uh, like this Locust, I got a Stinger, and I got a Wasp down here. I kind of spread this around, which actually brings the total weight of the uh, mechs down, or, or the, the, you know, the lances down, which should help out with the battles. Um, as you guys salvage, if you guys get heavier, you know, we'll, you'll be fighting, facing hard, harder uh, stuff. So bear that in mind. But, Part of it was I didn't want to put like a locust, a stinger, a wasp, and let's say uh, this Hermes all in one lance because it's just going they're just going to die in the first <laughs> the first battle we go against. Uh, but speaking of scout lances, here's the scout lance. I've got a, a Phoenix Hawk here, a 5-3 pilot. A Phoenix Hawk is a I think it's a 696. Let's see here. If, if you don't know what I mean by I'm saying, when 696, I'm talking about the movement speed. So, uh, let me look up the Phoenix Hawk real quick. Okay. Yeah, it's a 696. So, 6 walk, 9 run, 6 jump. And if I and if I don't have a third number there, like uh, this one, no, uh, this one, 4-6. It just means it doesn't, doesn't have the ability to jump. But, yeah, this is the standard uh, Phoenix Hawk. One large laser, two medium lasers, two machine guns. 45 tons. Have a Hermes 2, we went over that earlier. It's a 5 4. We have a Locust 1V, she's a 6 5 pilot. 20 ton mech goes uh, 8 12. It's probably the fastest mech we have currently. And we have an Oscout Scout in this one, which is a 6 5 pilot. I believe that's another 6 9 6. And this isn't the stupid one with only tag. This is the one, it only has one medium laser. It's not the greatest mech ever, but it will serve. Uh, oh no, this is actually pretty fast. Eight, twelve, eight. So it's a it's a, this one books as well, and Anne can jump to boot. So it's a thirty-five tonner. I didn't know they were that heavy. Cool. These are the mechs. Uh, I've got some techs here. I've got a few support uh, crew picked out. I've got a doctor. Here's the doctor. Zanetti Perez. What else was I wanting to do here? Oh, I wanted to roll up the first potential contracts. So, how I'm going to handle the contracts is this. Uh, I'm going to avoid, just ignore a lot of these modifiers. So, if we've got a mission type, it's going to be a straight 2d6, whatever we roll. Uh, I will use the Free Worlds League enemy list to figure out who we're fighting. I'll probably roll up two contracts, you know, every time we need to do a contract, and I'll let you guys pick which one we do. Um, I wanted to get down to where are we at? Ah, uh, here. I'll probably use like the contract type modifiers 
and down here for contract transport we're just going to ignore because I'm, I've got that turned off we'll just assume full um, the rest of these are just going to be basically 2d12 I'll use the modifiers and uh, the only other change I mean the salvage rules support rules battle loss compensation that'll all I'll just leave that whatever it rolls and it's either going to be integrated so house and integrated will all be considered integrated command and the other half is if it's it, it's it's either uh, independent so it will never be in where it has liaison here it'll be independent command and I'm also going to get rid of the rule where you know if like your integrated units die you lose points for the contract and, you know, we're all part of the same house so that's that so in, in that instance integrated probably be a little to our benefit but uh, let's see here contract locations subcontracts retainer uh, there's a rule I was considering using the retainer rules but it's all that all a retainer rule does is a plus one to all of these rules up here which oh I guess might as well I mean I'll do that so we in addition to whatever other modifiers we'll get a plus one just across the board so I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and I will roll up two contracts and I will share them with you here just shortly. Be right back. All right, I'm back and I've got a couple rolled up. Um, one thing I noticed in the rules I didn't mention, uh, overhead costs, I'm just going to leave it 100%. It's always kind of vague anyway in the rules anyway, so it, yeah, we'll work with that. Rolled up two, two contracts, one's a recon raid and one's an objective raid, both against the Capellan Confederation. Um, The uh, first uh, order of business here is in the recon raid, the enemies are going to be regular skill level F quality mechs, which doesn't mean, you know, it isn't, it means 100, minus 100 on the uh, Zottle rolls. So they still have potential to have good mechs, but uh, overall they're going to have less quality. Uh, also, allies, which there shouldn't be very many. Uh, but if we do roll up any allies in a mission, they will also be regular and have F quality. Uh, command will be independent for the recon raid. Uh, salvage is 20%, and it will have 100% uh, uh, support cost and also 100% battle loss compensation. And it's going to take place on the world of Jasmine. It'll be a three month long contract and a raid style. Con they're both raid style contracts. So uh, the other one's also three months. I didn't randomize that at all. Uh, it's also against the Capellans. Uh, they're the in this contract, the enemy would be green with rating D equipment, and allies would be elite with uh, F rating equipment. A command is again independent. Salvage is ten percent, um, which if if you don't know what the salvage 10% means, or 20% or whatever, uh, whatever you pull off the battlefield, you can keep up to 10% of that in this in this case, or 20% in the other one. So, if you destroy 10 wasps, let's say, for example, and, and they all have the exact same damage, you would be able to take one of them in this case, or two of them in the other contract. Uh, the support is 100% support again, but 10% uh, battle loss compensation for the second one. And that will happen on the world of Probus. So, uh, choose, and choose wisely. I think I know which one I would pick, which is a lot different than what I thought it was going to be when I was starting to roll them up. But it's up to you guys. Uh, let me know, and that's what we'll go with. Trying to think if there's any other order of business here. Uh, I am going to need to actually like buy parts and whatnot, like ammo and some armor and fun stuff like that. Let me go ahead and take care of that now. Since I'm thinking about it, purchase parts. Armor, I'm going to get us. Uh, I started us out with 5 million. That's including some of the. We don't have 5 million now because we had to pay to recruit people. That gives us a little bit of a starting fund here. Buy in bulk. I want to go ahead and get uh, these come in five armor, five tons lots anyway. So fifty. That'd be two hundred and fifty. 
Or wait, no. I'd be 25. If I bought the five tons, that'd be 25 tons worth of armor. I'm gonna go ahead and get 10. That's 50 tons worth of all transports paid for anyway, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Clink, 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 clink. What? Okay, well. <laughs> Why would it not be available to my unit? Hold up a minute. I didn't actually leave the... I guess the bot on, did I? Oh yeah, I did. Go away. I know... Well, I don't know why it would say that, but... Uh, that sounds like a bug. The armor should always be available. I'll have to put a bug report on that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're going to be dealing with a few bugs, but there's not, nothing that's going to be uh, too overwhelming. Let me see. I know we have an AC5s on the Hermes. Let's go ahead and buy. Let's say five of those. Here you see uh, our captain here doing the rolls. He found every single one of them. We'll get them well before we actually reach the battle site. Go ahead and get us. See, I know the hatchetman has this. Yeah, five. Five sounds like a good number. And he will roll until he fail. Like in this case, he failed the first one, so all of them are going to be put on the order list. And he can try once every seven days. Uh, definitely need to get some AC-20. We got that uh, hunchback. Okay. Yeah, got a couple of them. The rest of them are on order. Now, ammo I've got set up to where... Uh, It's pooled, so like if I could buy LRM-20 ammo, I can pull ammo. You know, I mean, just the missiles from that lot and put another mech max. But uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just buy it in bulk here. Ten. I know the bombardier and the stalker have it. I'm thinking one other mech has it. I could be wrong about that. But for now, dink. Get some SRM-6 ammo. Go ahead and get uh, yeah, ten of that. Whoops. Look here, here's one for one day. I'll get it tomorrow. I'm not going to advance the day though until I hear from you guys. I need to know what you want to do with maintenance and so forth. Oh, and speaking of the maintenance, one other thing. If we do it by the percentage, just paying the percentage instead of doing the rolls, I'm going to set the timer to every like month. I think it does it automatically. I think that is it. A lot of this stuff we can't even get because it's not within our era. Again, we're starting at 3025, so it's going to be uh, basic. Yeah, okay, okay. That's uh, as far as anything else, if you guys think we need to get some extra components or anything, let me know and I will take it into under consideration. We do need to kind of watch our money uh, as we'll, you know, we, we also gonna want to maybe buy new mechs and uh, maybe hire new pilots as well. So all this initial money is going to go towards that. Oh, and the one final thing before I go here. Uh, the payment multiplier for contracts, I'm going to leave at one times for all the missions. So, you know, I say that, why not go ahead and just roll it up? Add a little variety to these two, because these two are pretty much the same otherwise. I think these are multiplied together, and we're going to assume company rating C at all times. So, oops. I have my magnifying glass for my old poor eyes. I, I use it a lot and I use it reflexively. Um, objective rate would be 1.6. Where's the other? Recon rate, they're both 1.6. Times 1.2. <laughs> so either way, it's going to be the same number. All right, well, there we go. We got 1.92 is going to be the multiplier for both these missions. Oops. Oh, 
there it is. I'll go ahead and get this all saved, loaded up, propped up, and uh, next time we see you, we should be on our way to one of these two places. Take care, guys.